Okay, before we start assigning key switches, I'd like to tell you that this multiscript was written by the very brilliant and talented Robert Bilwock, better known as Big Bob. I've known Big Bob for several years now, and I'm always amazed at what he continually offers the contact scripting community, not only with the great scripts he writes, but also the scripting tools like the KSP Math Library. Okay, so now on to the multi-script. The uh, first thing I'd like to show you are the four rack spaces that we can use with this script. These rack spaces can be rather confusing because NI uses them as ports A, B, C, and D when assigning the MIDI channels. However, as you will soon see, these ports can be assigned in any of the four rack spaces. Another thing I would like to bring your attention to is that uh, NI actually calls these rack spaces pages, pages 1, 2, 3, and 4. So to try to avoid confusion, I will call them pages 1, 2, 3, and 4 from now on. Okay, on page 1, I have six violin section articulations. Sustain, forte piano, sforzando, staccato, pizzicato, and tremolo. Also on this page, you'll notice I have two other instruments. Orchestra percussion and a Rhodesy sound, the Mark II. These two instruments will not be assigned key switches in the multi-script. All their MIDI will come directly from Reaper on the corresponding MIDI channels. So now let's go to page two. I have uh, violas and the French horns, and each of them have four articulations. The violas have sustain, staccato, pizzicato, and tremolo. The French horns have sustain, staccato, forte, piano, and sforzando. Then over on page three, you can see I have all the cellos with six articulations. And finally, page four has four articulations, both for the double bass and the trumpets. I should mention, I purposely use Contacts Library uh, samples for this demonstration so that they would be compatible for all contact users. Coming up next, I'm going to get into assigning key switches. Now I want to show you a little bit about assigning the key switches. However, before we get too far, I should explain the purpose of this multi-script. As many of you know, Contact actually has 64 channels available. However, Reaper, or any DAW for that matter, can only send 16 usable channels. From what I understand, the reason for this is because Contact is still a VST2 type. Now, since I'm not informed enough about the differences between BST2 and BST3, I won't get into that. Just remember that Reaper can only send 16 channels, but Contact has 64 channels available. So now the first thing we have to do is decide where we want the key switches to go. Uh, personally, I like to have my key switches below the actual notes that will be played. So what we have to do is determine what our lowest note will be. And in all likelihood, that will be the double bass. So let's go to the last page, to the basses. Uh, since we can open any of the basses to find out, let's open the sustain. You can click on the group editor if you'd like to see which groups are involved. But mainly we want the mapping editor. Uh, where we can easily determine the lowest note. Here you can see how the samples are laid out. Let's just click on the lowest sample. Ah, so we can see the lowest note is going to be a B minus one, indicated here, as well as down on the virtual keyboard. Now, if I knew ahead of time uh, I was only going to need six key switches. I could just count down six keys. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. And the lowest key switch would be an F minus one. However, when first starting out with an arrangement, 
you really don't know how many key switches you might need. And since I'd prefer to start with a C position anyway, I'm going to make the C minus one the lowest key switch. So let's take a look at our virtual keyboard. As you may have noticed, this little keyboard only covers two and a half octaves. So down here below the keyboard, we have two little arrows for moving up and down the keyboard. Going up, we can go all the way up to the G8 on top, or we can go down all the way to the C-2, a total of 128 keys. So I'm going to move up one octave here and put the C-1 right on the bottom. So now we can start assigning the uh, key switches. There are a number of ways you can do this, depending on your way of thinking and, and your workflow. When I started this little demo sequence for testing this script, I had no idea what I was going to need other than, number one, I knew I was going to use a string section, which would be comprised of a violin, viola, cello, and a double bass. Number two, I knew I was going to use Contacts Library so that everything would be compatible for the contact users. So the next step now is to load my articulations. And since the string section is comprised of four different instrument sections, the violins, violas, cellos, and basses, I decided they would fit very well into Contact's four pages. So starting with the violins, I loaded Contact's violin articulations into page one. Violas went on page two, cellos on page three, and the double basses on page four. The reason I use this order is very simple. The uh, violins have the highest range, so it goes on top or comes first in my line of thinking, uh, not only in contact, but with my track assignments in Reaper as well, along with the MIDI editor. Next will be the uh, violas, then the cellos, and finally the bass. Now you may have noticed I have six articulations for the violins and the cellos, while I only have four articulations for the violas and double basses. I originally started out with six articulations in all sections, but as I got into my demo composition, I decided I only needed four articulations for the violas and the double bass. So I removed the articulations I didn't need, and the reason for this is to free up more channels, which we will get into later. So now uh, let's take a look at our multi-script. First of all, I'd like to point out that if you've got your info button on, up here on top, Bob has provided some nice help info that you can see down in the info pane. That way, when you hoover over any of the buttons or virtual piano in the multi-script, you can read what it's for and what it does. Now let's go over these 16 buttons on top. What they represent is the 16 channels I mentioned earlier that Reaper can put out. And it's these buttons that we will assign our key switches to. Since the violins are on top and first, that means, in my way of thinking, I want to use channel 1. So now I need to decide which key I want to assign to the violins. And since violas, cellos, and basses are below the violins, I'm going to select the fourth key up, which is a D-sharp minus 1. Next comes the violas, and you might think I would select channel 2 because it's next in line. However, that's not the case because I have six articulations for the violin. And this is where we get into how this multi-script works. As I've already mentioned, Reaper can only send 16 MIDI channels to a single instance of contact. So we need a way of uh, accessing the other 48 MIDI channels. And the way this multi-script works is that it can assign up to four of the 64 available channels to each of the 16 channels coming from Reaper. So this is where the ports A, B, C, and D come in. And as you can see, the way I've assigned the first four violin articulations, it's A1, B1, C1, and D1. 
And as you may suspect, the A, B, C, and D stand for the four contact ports, while the number one stands for the channel coming from Reaper. Ah, <laughs> but now I need two more channels for the violin. And one of the nice features of this multi-script is that it will automatically assign the next channel to go with the previous channel, as long as that channel isn't physically assigned with a script. In other words, since I assigned the violins to channel 1, now channel 2 is available for four more violin articulations, A2, B2, C2, and D2. That's as long as I don't click on channel 2 in the multi-script and assign it to another key switch. So now, let's go back to the violas. Since I've got channels 1 and 2 for the violins, the next available channel is number 3. So I click on 3 and then assign the next key down from the violin, which is a D minus 1. Then I do likewise with the cellos and the basses. Just keep in mind that I started out with six articulations for each section. So I want to leave a channel open between the channels I select. So the channels will be assigned channel 5 and the basses channel 7. And since I'm not ready to assign any more key switches yet, I just click on the channel 7 button to close the edit mode. Notice now the selected key switches are clearly shown. Now I think it might be a good time to explain how these different instruments are accessed from Reaper. As you can see here, at the front of the instrument names for the violin, I have K1-1, K1-2, Dash 3, 4, 5, and 6. The K1 stands for the key switch associated with channel 1. The following Dash 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 are actually the velocities of the key switches in the MIDI editor. In other words, if the key switch is on D-sharp minus 1 in the MIDI editor, and it has a velocity of 1, then the MIDI data coming from Reaper on channel 1 is directed to the violin sustains. If the D-sharp minus 1 has a velocity of 4, then the data will be directed to the violin staccatos. Likewise, if the key switch has a velocity of 6, it will play the violin tremolos. Now let's take a look at the violas. I have them labeled K3-1 to K3-4. This means that the key switch associated with channel 3 will play one of the viola articulations. So if the key switch has a velocity of 1, it will be directed to the sustains. If the velocity is 2, it will play the staccatos, 3 the pizzicatos, and 4 the tremolos. Coming up next, we will be adding the other instruments. Okay, let's move on to the other added instruments. As I went along putting the composition together, I decided it would be nice to have some French horns to go along with it. Now, I could have just added them to page 1, right below the violins. However, I'd like to keep page 1 open and free for the other instruments that can be directly accessed from Reaper without going through the multi-script. Now, this brings us up to one of the confusing aspects about Contact. Contact uses ports A, B, C, and D in a way that they seem to correlate with pages 1, 2, 3, and 4. However, the four ports have nothing to do with the four pages. You can actually put 16 instruments using port A through A16 on pages 2, 3, or 4, or scatter them around on all four pages. So why do I want to use page 1 for all these other instruments? Simply because I prefer to do it that way. Just remember that port A is the only port that can be directly accessed from your DAW. So let's take a look at the violas. Originally I had six viola articulations, 
And what I could have done is simply keep the six articulations, add the horns, and then assign them to channel number nine. But as I looked the violas over, I decided I was not going to use the sforzando or the forte piano. So I removed them, which freed up channel number four for the French horns. Likewise, with the solo trumpet, looking over the basses, I knew I wouldn't need the pizzicato or the tremolos, so I removed them, which freed up channel eight for the trumpet. So now to sum this up and put it into perspective, I started out with six articulations for the violas. They were assigned channels three and four in the multi-script. By removing two viola articulations, it freed up channel four for the horns. Then I did the same with the basses by removing two of the bass articulations. It freed up channel eight for the trumpet. So now let's uh, assign the horns and the trumpet. First the horns. Let's put that on channel number four. And then let's use key switch E minus one. Then for the uh, solo trumpet, let's click on channel eight and assign it to key switch F minus one. Then let's click on the channel eight button and close the edit mode. Okay, let's go back to page one and take a look at the other two instruments, the percussion and the Mark II. Notice that their MIDI channel assignments are A10 and A11 respectively. These instruments are controlled directly from Reaper. And as we take a look at the sends in Reaper, you can see the orchestra percussion is assigned to number 10. And the Mark II is assigned to number 11. Well, that concludes my little tutorial concerning this multi-script. If you haven't already, be sure and carefully look over the user guide. Bob has a lot of very good information on how this multi-script works. Incidentally, I also included the Reaper project that I used to create the orchestration for testing this multi-script. That might also give you a little better understanding of how all this works. So for now, good luck and most of all, have fun. <laughs>